So here I am with my friends, we're just scrolling through Netflix trying to find something completely awful to watch, and uh, we see this gym, Expelled. This sounds familiar. So we click on the more information button and read the brief synopsis of the film, but that's not what caught our eye. What caught our eye is this name right here, Cameron... Dallas. What? Cameron Dallas was in a movie? From 2014, no less. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It was at the height of his career, being a Vine star. So we did a little bit of digging, and found Cameron Dallas has actually been in a few movies. A strange film from China named Frog Kingdom 3D. Uh, I don't really know what he played in that, but he, uh, it's apparently it's apparently higher rated than uh, Expelled is. Then the next year after Frog Kingdom, Cameron Dallas played Felix O'Neill in his hit comedy film of the 2014 summer season that got a uh, <laughs> <laughs> One out of five on Common Sense Media. Great job, Cameron. You made a good movie. After Expelled, he moved on to Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, and The Outfield. Both not fantastic movies, but a lot better than Expelled. A straight-to-video-on-demand movie. But, mind you, this is 2014. This was way before YouTube Red. I don't even think Cameron Dallas had his YouTube channel in the year of 2014. So I looked even deeper into this character, Cameron Dallas. To be completely honest with you, I never really got on the Viner hype train. So this came as a huge shock for me. 20 million followers on Instagram. That's huge. So yes, Cameron Dallas is a social media giant. His acting and film career is absolutely abysmal, but when it comes to social media, he kind of knows what he's doing. I don't give him that much. Cameron Dallas also has two YouTube channels. Cameron Dallas with 5 million subscribers, which is completely insane to me, and Cameron Dallas Vlogs, or Cameron's Vlogs with half a million subscribers which is pretty pitiful compared to his other channel with 5 million. His YouTube channel is clearly run by a social media publicist. There's nothing wrong with that, especially being such a big personality on the internet. I get it. But this is just straight up confusing. There's a button here that says YouTube, and we're already on YouTube, so I don't really know what this will do. So I click this button, it redirects me to a, another website, and then shoots me right back to his YouTube channel with a confirm channel subscription button. And no, Cameron, I'm not going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. The subscribe button is less than an inch away from this YouTube link button, which is just strange to say the least. His YouTube channel is surprisingly competent though. The views range and vary quite a bit, but he does get a few viral videos here and there with 1 million, 5 million views, and his most popular video getting 24 million views, which was two years ago, which I'd say is about the height of his career. Which makes my next point make a lot more sense. Cameron Dallas wants to get back into acting, and that's the main reason why I'm making this video again, because Cameron, I know you're not watching this, but if you are, please do not make another movie. So at this point, you're probably wondering who made this movie and why? Well, those two questions have two very simple answers. The first being Awesomeness Films, or Awesomeness TV. Awesomeness TV is essentially just a collective of Vine stars, YouTubers, that just push out 
terrible content. And this just happens to be one of those pieces of garbage. And number two, what is this movie? What is it about? Well, it's essentially Ferris Bueller's Day Off, just terrible. It has almost no redeeming qualities. It's not funny. The shot design is not creative. The lighting is bland, boring. The audio is nothing special. The soundtrack is terrible. There is essentially no redeeming qualities for this film. It's almost like Cameron Dallas watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off once and was like, yeah, I feel like I could do that, but like way better because I'm Cameron Dallas. Also, another thing about this movie is he clearly is not in touch with reality. This movie is directed at me. I am the audience. I am a high school student. This movie is set in high school. This does not feel like high school. This feels like an overprivileged journey into Cameron Dallas's mind. Not high school. So the movie opens up with a few establishing shots of the school. Clearly it's extremely wealthy and probably very highly regarded. Uh, this is the principal. He's the principal. He plays the principal. He's not anything special. This is Cameron Dallas. He's an asshole. That's his, that's his character. He plays it terribly. I thought it was three. Uh, two, Felix. Two suspensions. The first was in September for rewiring the cheerleaders' fundraiser money to a koala bear sanctuary. Noble cause, don't you think? I think you owe an apology to a dozen cheerleaders. I think there are two dozen koalas. I would disagree with that, Gary. Yeah, so essentially, Cameron Dallas, a.k.a. Felix, pulls these school pranks and he's gotten two suspensions, and the principal, Gary, is done with him. So, he gets expelled. I'm expelling you, Felix. That's it. Wait, seriously? That was your third strike. So this means I, I can't come to class anymore? Oh, you'll never set foot in this school again. Gary, I don't know how to thank you. So as you can tell, the acting in this movie is absolutely fantastic. Really, YouTube Red shows and movies are just trying to aspire to this level of quality. Oh my God. The retirement. Right now, Mr. Truman's about to call my mom to let her know about my expulsion. I can't let that happen. On average, an Eastwood High Fire Drill takes 11 minutes. I only need 10. Cameron Dallas. Just think about this. He sits down, he watches Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He's like, whoa. I'm Cameron Dallas. I'm, pra I'm d practically just as good. I could, do, I could do a movie just as good. I'm Cameron Dallas. I make vines. I make seven second videos. I can do a feature length film. What? What? No! That's the, this is not how this works. You can't, you can't do that. You can't just say, yeah, I can do this better than you can. That's just, this is just straight up almost plagiarism of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He turns to the camera, immediately breaks the fourth wall in the first five minutes of the movie. And then he claims, that no, this is an original concept, an original story. What, what is this movie? How did this get made? Why did Fox fund this? So about 15 minutes pass and we get essentially the first look at what this plot is, like what this movie is actually about. Um, essentially his parents ask for his report card because the report cards are coming out it's the first quarter whatever that's normal high school stuff but the issue is he is expelled and his parents don't know he faked a phone call with the principal you know ferris bueller stuff so he goes to his ex-girlfriend which uh, somehow has access to the report card printing station or something like why why would you even give a student access to that so essentially he wants 
her to forge him a fake report card, which if he knew how to use Photoshop and a printer, I, he could take care of himself. So this is where we get the first kind of conflict in the story. She's his ex-girlfriend, he doesn't like her, she doesn't like him, but they both have two goals. She wants to become student council president, and he wants a, well, good report card. So they make a deal. He essentially says, okay, I'll blackmail your rival so you can become the student council president. And she's like, okay, yeah, that sounds completely fine and completely normal for high school students to be thinking about. So they strike a deal and Felix finds a Twitter account named Roxy. And he's like, okay, if I expose Roxy, then that'll be great evidence to make her student council president because everybody hates Roxy, blah, 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 blah. So he goes to his hacker friend, of course, you know, his best friend who's just a hacker. And he hacks into Twitter. He hacks into Twitter. He, he quote unquote, I, he finds a back door into Twitter. And oh my God, is this the worst hacking scene in any movie I have ever seen in my entire life? Just watch this. How's it coming? You may want to sit down for this. Password acquired. And I also found Roxy's IP address. You got the IP address? How? Worked a little bit of my magic and found a back door into Twitter. Are you kidding? Nope. Nearly pooped my pants from excitement. I know Roxy's true identity. Shut up and show me. Yeah, so it turns out that Roxy is actually Stacy, the exact girl that Vanessa was running against. So now the gang has perfect evidence to take down Roxy and make Vanessa the new student council president. One thing about this film is, I get that he has to be expelled, but he spends the entire movie in school. There's only a handful of scenes where he's at his house and not at school. He's practically not even expelled. He is still in school, doing school things. He even goes to certain classes. So then he goes and he exposes Roxy in front of the entire school and says, Hey, look, it's Stacy. And she's been doing all this mean and terrible stuff. Whatever, that's to be expected. But one thing about this movie is that each chunk, each segment, each arc in it, its only purpose is to propel the story to the next arc. It seems that there is completely no direction, and everyone involved in this movie is just kind of going along with it. Most movies, you kind of get what the main conflict is going to be, and you kind of get where it's going to end. The hero's journey. It's the structure of a story. But in this film, it's like a bunch of small little arcs and climaxes, and there is really no true issue or climax in the entire film. He's expelled, he's happy with it, that's fine, whatever. He gets a bad report card, that's alright, I'll just go to the school play and embarrass her until she makes me change it. It's just this constant up and down and back and forth between these multiple characters that just make this movie a very bumpy ride instead of a steady incline and, and a solid payoff. So then Cameron Dallas and his hacker friend decide to break into the school, uh, you know, as you do, and change his report card from F's to straight A's because nobody will notice that change whatsoever, especially from an expelled student. So they get control of the principal's laptop and put a bug, quote unquote, inside of it. Though. This is a setup. The principal knew this would happen somehow. I don't really know how, even after watching the movie a few times. He must just be some omniscient being. The police come and arrest Felix, and 
this seems like this is going to be the end. His parents are going to find out that he's not actually expelled and that he has straight F's and not straight A's. But his brother, yes, his brother, he has a brother. What? When, when did they introduce this brother character? They said, his, they said him once and he just appeared in a crate in his yard. He mailed himself out from this prison school that's barely explained. And his brother just pretends to be his father and we get this mask-esque back and forth between the cop and the father with wacky sound effects and it's completely terrible. And when this brother character is introduced, this is where the movie really starts to fall apart and the cracks start to show. They really tried to stretch this out to make it the length of a normal feature length film. For someone who usually acts in 7 second clips, I'm sure this was quite a struggle for him. I do not want to know what he was like on set. Mr. O'Neill? Do you happen to have a moist talent by chance? Your son's in a lot of trouble. What? Felix, I am disappointed in you, son. Super, super disappointed in I'm you. I'm so sorry, Dad. Ready, son? Yep. All right, then. See ya. <laughs> you know, I was expecting you to be a little bit more upset, Dad. Or can I call you Ben now? Well, it's good to see you, little bro. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah. I miss you, man. I miss you, too. How'd you know it was me? I mean, it wasn't hard to recognize you, even with that little creep stash. The last 15 to 20 minutes is the most plot you're actually going to get out of this movie. Essentially, Cameron Dallas and his hacker friend find out that the principal is actually addicted to online poker and is using the school as his personal bank account. He's taking money from the school and using it to gamble, and he is losing tons of money doing this, and he does it every Saturday night. So he's like, all right, here's a plan. How about I blackmail our principal with charges of embezzlement to put me back into the school? Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, he also has a girlfriend who just happens to be another YouTube star. The girl from the Fine Bros channel, the React, like the teens react and kids react. She's that girl who like grew up all the way through it. She's actually all right in this movie, so I can't really give her that much crap. Gary! Nice car. Are you really this stupid? How many times do I need to have you arrested this week? Oh, you're gonna call the cops? If you are, then great. I'd love to tell them about the $10,000 you stole from the school to fund your gambling addiction. Yeah. It's your word against mine. Who do you think they're gonna side with anyway? I bugged your laptop, Gary. I have hard evidence of all your activity on my hard drive. And frankly, I don't think they're gonna have trouble picking sides. What is this? You want money? What do you want? Enrollment. Enrollment? I want enrollment in the next semester at Eastwood. And I want the forms filled out by Monday. That's ridiculous. Gary, these last few days have been hell for me. But I know there's still a chance for me to set things straight. What are you talking about? You once asked me, what kind of future do you see for yourself? I thought about it a lot. And my future is here at Eastwood. So yes, this movie is just one big nonsensical circle. We start off at school, he gets expelled, hijinks ensue, fourth wall breaking happens, Ferris Bueller's day off is straight up ripped off, and then he gets re-enrolled, and everything is alright. What we like to call this is a dog and bone ending. Even though there are trial and tribulations along the way, 
the ending is still happy and there is of course a moral and a message which the entire film is trying to push the idea that school is not that bad and you should not be looking at it as a place of boredom or anger or frustration you should be looking at school in a positive light and all that it's trying to help you do is find a place for you and Cameron Dallas's character realizes that his place is actually in school and not expelled and laying on his couch all day which I think is an all right message to push just the way that they pushed the message was completely convoluted and terrible the real reason I'm making this video is not to hate on Cameron Dallas, even though he is not a very competent actor, and I personally do not like him as a social media personality. I'm making this video more as a PSA. People need to stop making these types of movies, and YouTubers should stick to what they're good at and leave filmmaking to, well, filmmakers. Unless those YouTubers are filmmakers. There are a lot of fantastic people on YouTube on that platform that I would love to see movies by. Corridor Digital comes to mind. They are fantastic and they actually know what they're doing. My point being, the industry as a whole gives money to the wrong people. And uh, Cameron Dallas just happens to be one of those people. The idea is not original, the movie is not funny, and overall, it's just terrible. Wait, how much? This movie made 80 million dollars?